Misery on Pugna, that means it's a support Pugna. Undying on, I mean Bone 7 on Undying, so he will be getting a farm on one lane. And uh, Fata, Fata Shadowfiend, I believe. This is what we're watching now, Fata Shadowfiend. Prepare for battle. Okay, starting with uh, Rave Band and Branches. He's going to get Tangos shared by the supports. Um, the Rave Band and Branches build is a lot of stats build. It's not the fast bottle build. And he's going to be playing against the Viper mid, I believe. I believe IG will have the Razor on a duo lane with Tusk, most likely. Okay, warding their jungle. SF starting with uh, Rave Band. Um, with he battle. basically has 49 damage right now. And uh, he's getting that so he can contest last hits early on. If he goes for the no stats build, if he goes only for two branches, I think he will get zoned out really hard by the Viper. Because if you don't get a Wraith Band but you go with only two branches instead, uh, you will have like 41 damage or 40 damage. <laughs> and he didn't get any tangos by the supports, he's getting a... Uh, He's getting a healing salve first. Looks like a Drow Ranger mid lane. He did get some tangos now, okay. No daddy, no daddy, no daddy big tail. This is the third time I say that. Confusing sometimes. Big daddy no tail, um, helping mid a little bit. Um, I believe what big daddy is going to be doing here is stuck the big and the medium camp, stack those two camps and help mid with harassing the draw ranger and uh, getting the bottle wisp players usually get a fast bottle they get the bounty rune and they get a fast bottle in this game the rune was for SF a lot of harassment, a lot of help here by Big Daddy, so that's very good. Draw Ranger is getting solo experience while they are sharing the experience between two people, but this is okay since see, he is he's helping him so much. When Shadowfiend gets last hits, Shadowfiend would need help in the beginning to get souls so he can last hit. And later on, Draw Ranger can't do that much. Like, Shadowfiend is weak in the beginning when he has no souls, no damage. You can just out last hit him, you can out harass him. But at this point, he can't do that anymore. So now the Wisp is stacking the big camp. And uh, the first item on Fata is going to be a bottle. Sometimes when people play with the Wisp Not mid, like the, the true duo lane mid is Wisp Tiny, so the Tiny doesn't get a bottle, um, only the Wisp does, but in this game Fata does get a bottle, he, he decides to get one. I like what Cloud9 is doing here. I like it a lot. They are focusing on winning the mid lane really hard. At one point Pagna was behind the tier 1 tower and Big Daddy is sitting on the mid lane. He is helping with the harassment and he's also stacking the jungle all the time. So they are focusing on farming up the, the Shadow Fiend. On the safe lane they have a solo Queen of Pain and on top lane they have Pugna Undying, which is a very strong lane. Because during the draft we saw how good 
lane winners. IG picked. They picked a Razor and the Viper. Those are lane winners. So Cloud9 is like, we don't really care if you win off lane and bottom. I mean off lane and safe lane. We're going to farm up the Shadow Fiend. And that's a very good idea, so they are dodging. Dodging what IG is doing. Because IG is basically contesting very hard. Uh, they are contesting the lanes. There is a Razor top and a Viper bottom. So bottom is not getting much farm. Envy is sitting at Envy is sitting at three last hits and two denies. That's nothing for four minutes of uh, four minutes into the game. The top lane Undying is not getting much. He has only ten last hits. The only one getting a lot of farm from Cloud9 is SF right now. And uh, I believe that's the plan, boys. I believe that's the plan. I think they will try to dive the tower here. Um, did he bottle crow or he gave his bottle to wisp? He gave his bottle to wisp. Okay, so they are. This is what they did. He bought the bottle, but he gave it to wisp, so he can get the runes on wisp, and SF can stay on the lane and farm as much as possible. Because remember, he's he should be the most farmed hero. They are farming up the SF, so giving the bottle to Wisp to get the runes so he can farm as much as possible. Very smart idea. Uh, Ring of Aquila or Aquila, whatever you say. Boots of speed. Random shards by Tusk trying to get some last hits. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. First blood. First blood. They picked off the tusk. There was a double damage on Wisp, and uh, together with Queen of Pain, they picked off the tusk. Bounty rune for him. Forty last hits of six minutes. Crazy. Very good, very good last hits. A lot of last hits. Top lane is doing okay. They haven't died a single time. Razor is obviously getting the farm he he needs. Fata is out farming everyone only because of the stacks. The ten extra last hits that he has more than Ra than Viper and Razor. Um, is because of the stacks. So that means both Viper and Razor are free farming, and that basically means IG so far is winning both bottom and top lane. And they want to go on him there, but he just goes back. He has a healing salve as well, he just used it. Power threats are coming from the courier. But basically, yeah, they don't care that they are losing bottom and top. Since Queen of Pain is getting experience at least. Only 10 last hits, but he's getting a lot of experience. He's level 6. And Shadow Fiend is going to be the carry of this game. Um, this is definitely not going to be... Uh, Mech Shadow Fiend, I think at least, I think. They are tipping in with two heroes. Viper and Razor are tipping in, but it's only Viper, Razor cancelled. Draw Ranger is getting almost no last hits, he has only 17. So Cloud9 is winning the mid lane at least, and they are winning it really hard. And he is getting a mech, I was wrong. Um, since they have a, they have a wisp, 
Apogna and an Undying. Those three heroes are very good mech heroes. Um, I thought one of them is going to buy a mech, but they want it on Shadowfiend actually. And Wisp is not level 6 yet, so Relocate Gank is not available yet. But it will be very soon, I guess. He's level 5 and a half. Radiance bottom tower what is, is this? Attack. This is a mech. Okay, so mech on Shadow Fiend makes the Radiant five man Dota even stronger. So Radiant this is the plan here. Is under Get the fast mech on Shadow Fiend and go as five maybe. Um, what IG has is lane winners. They have a Razor and a Viper. But is their team fight Radiant's good? I think not. I think Cloud9's team fight is better. So this is the plan to go as five early on with the Tombstone undying, Pugna just nuking creeps and towers, SF with the very early mech to heal the teammates, Queen of Pain of course, Sonic Wave, Scream of Pain. You see this? Radiant the f the most farmed hero on attack. the map is Shadowfiend because he's been farming stacks. And the next three heroes are um, from IG. And I believe IG is gonna be getting a mech as well on Viper or Razor. It's going to be on Viper. Um, let's go back to the player perspective <laughs> mechanism is almost ready he needs 400 gold more and this is 2-0 so far what happened the previous game um, okay there is a relocate gang he is going to double raise him there even using the ultimate as well Tusk is dead, Razor is not going to die, he managed to TP out, but still that's a 2 for 1 trade, 2 for 1 or 1 for 1? It was a 1 for 1 trade. So that's okay. Mechanism is coming now I believe, so they will they will be grouping up to push looks like that's going to be bottom lane the reason why they went mech on shadow fiend is because they wanted it fast nice very nice kill right there The reason why they went mech on SF is because they wanted it really fast. Um, and the uh, fast mech is going to happen only on core heroes. On supports, the supports are not farming. On top of that, Dyer's no one had farm on the lanes spawned. except the Shadow Fiend. He was Dyer's the most farmed hero attack. from the laning stage. He has 100 last hits now at 12 minutes into the game. So. Next item is going to be Sanjin Yasha. A bit of right click, a bit of movement speed, HPs. Sanjin Yasha is good on SF. Um, he did TP out. He got graved. Dazzle died instead. This is. They are dominating the map very well right now. Just like last game. Dyer's top tower has fallen. So the Wisp went back bottom and died, but they killed the tier 1 tower. So it's a Wisp for a Dazzle kill and one tier 1 tower kill. So it's totally worth. Dyer's and they have 3k gold advantage right now. He's tipping bottom. bottom. They can't cancel the TP. Radiance Viper is going to die. 
two raises enough to kill him. The sonic wave was used as well. And now they wanna push bottom, I believe. Tombstone will be up soon. No, the tombstone was just used, never mind. What is Bone 7 building? What is he going for? He has Arcane Boots and he is building a Crimson Guard. Okay. So Arcane Boots, Mech, Crimson Guard, very good for the team. Very good 5 men. Are they going to do Roche now? This early? Double damage. He is actually not using the bottle at all. In the beginning he bought a bottle for for Wisp. Like basically he bought the bottle to give it to Wisp. And he he stayed on the lane to farm as much as possible in the beginning. <laughs> there is a relocate gank now. Um he's alone. I think that was on purpose. That relocate on uh, solo wisp or wisp alone was on purpose for sure. Just to zone out the draw ranger to make him go back. The tombstone though, the zombies. Queen of Pain is there as well. Sigil is dead, Viper is dead, and they just want to keep going right now. Double race is available. Dazzle. It's a not bad synergy between Pugna and SF at the same time. Because the Decrypt, Decrypt Phi or whatever it's called slows down and SF can get a good position for raises and it also increases the magical damage taken so as uh, the the raises are magical damage and this is just a very good five man lineup with an extremely farmed shadow fiend what we are watching right now is cloud9 losing the losing two out of three lanes but still winning the game really hard because SF is really farmed and their 5 men is better than the enemy's 5 men. Because IG, once again, I said that already but it's okay I guess. IG went for lane winners. They have a Viper and a Razor but when it comes to 5 manning, Cloud9's 5 man is stronger. Or at least it looks stronger. So far they have been winning. Oh! There is uh, smoke gangs on IG. They want to get some kills back. 5k goat advantage for C9. He keeps pushing here. So they ganked the Undying? Yes, they did gank the Undying. Hello Jado, how are you man? Sanjin Yasha and next item is a Skadi. Oh god, the Sanjin Yasha Skadi build. A very tanky. And SF already has damage from the souls, so tankiness, damage, very good, very smart, very good. He needs to be tanky and to deal damage, and with the Sanjin Yasha and Skadi. Team Secret is doing great, I cannot complain. Oh, same for me. C9 is doing well. <laughs> You know? So you... You like secret, huh?
Okay, Dazzle is top, but he can easily TP. He can TP out. One thing that Cloud9 doesn't have in their team is a stun. I don't know if you guys noticed, Cloud9 does not have a stun. Um, but, I mean, that's a not good thing. Not having a stun is not very good. If they don't manage to to um, kill someone fast enough with the relocate gank, they can't stop the TP. So, heroes like Razor and Viper will always be able to TP out because they are tanky, they are core heroes, they have farm, they have lots of HPs, but a Dazzle, actually Dazzle can grave, him, grave himself and then TP out. Drow Ranger cannot escape a relocate gank, um, Tusk cannot escape a relocate gank, I believe. So they took the tier 2 tower at bottom, there is a Viper showing on the mid lane, Dazzle is pushing top, that means IG is trying to push out the lanes, they are not smoking or anything like that. Tusk is scouting with the Ice Shard, we can see them there. SF is going to take the Aegis I believe, he dropped his TP throw, and IG is not even trying to contest Roche, they cannot contest. They are going to try to relocate, and this is exactly what I mean. They relocate, but they can't cancel TP's, so that's something not very good, but it's okay. They still have a huge lead in the game, huge advantage. Big fan of uh, Puppy and Kuroki. And same thing with Fly, and you support support the teams they are in. Yeah, very good players you are mentioning right there, <laughs> Puppy and Kuroki. So that all, that means you were a Navi fan a long time ago, or not very long ago, but when they were in Navi, you were a big Navi fan. You don't like Navi anymore nowadays? Dendi and Havost are there, so... Why do I like C9? Basically the same reason why Jadu likes Secret. Um, I like the players. I really respect Bone7 and Envy. Um, no Tail is also an excellent player, and I like their playstyle. They are known for a very different playstyle. They they will always get something new, and uh, they are always different. Their playstyle is very good. They can adapt to so many situations. And I also like watching long games. To be honest with you, I like watching long games. And I think Cloud9 is the team with the longest uh, games in average in Dota 2 from all the teams. I'm not sure here, but um, maybe that's true. The first three or four games they had from the international were more than one hour every single game longer than one hour radiance top tower is under attack i like longer ga i like long radiance top tower i like long games c9's games are long so another reason and I think they will go when when the Skadi is ready. They have to go. This has to finish pretty early, I believe. They don't have to go for a very late, for a very long game here. 
Everyone from IG is missing right? Uh, just kidding, there are... There is a Viper mid and there are three people top. They weren't smoking. They can't even smoke, like... Bone7 is hiding into the trees. I mean, that's Misery, sorry. So Misery is hiding into the tree stop. He's not showing, like... No one is showing to get ganked. And... Wisp is just following SF all the time. And now that Sanjin, Yasha and Skadi is up, he is very tanky. He also has a lot of damage from the souls. And he is ready. Ready to wreck them all. And Undying is not a very good late game hero, so they definitely want to go early here. Tombstone? I don't see the tombstone. Tombstone is down. Okay, I see it now. See? They stole 200 damage from him. But they didn't do anything. Like, th they can't kill them. Cloud9 seems to be unkillable right now. They have a mech. They have a Crimson Guard as well. Is it ready? Is the Crimson Guard ready? It's not yet. There is the Aghanim Scepter. So he can heal Wisp. Aghanim Scepter on Pugna to heal Wisp and Shadowfiend. And then Wisp also heals the Shadowfiend. And Undying has a heal as well, so... <laughs> they, has, they, they have so much heals in, in Cloud9. This reminds me of the first game of the group stages of C9 that I uploaded on YouTube. I uploaded Batrider's player perspective, but it was basically Envy playing on Razor, and he was extremely tanky, but they didn't have late game. So they couldn't win the because they didn't have the late game, and they couldn't finish the game when they needed to. This one reminds me of that game. Very tanky Shadow Fiend and everyone just sitting behind him and just supporting him and just waiting for him. And he stays in front. He has no BKB, but he doesn't even need it. If you look at um, IG's team, they have a lot of stuff that goes through BKB, like Razor's Link that steals damage goes through BKB. Um, and then it's just right clicks from Draw Ranger, the punch from Dusk goes through Magic Immunity as well. So he's going for a Butterfly instead. It's going to help with the physical damage IG has. And right now they are just going to be farming and playing defensive. Um, the Aegis is down so they might wait for another Roche. 11 kills in 26 minutes but... To be honest with you, I still, I still like this game a lot. By the way, the slow you get from these two items is insane. Sanjin, Yasha, Skadi, the combination of these two items, the slow is just... Uh, you can't move. I think they don't care about this. They are relocating mid instead. And uh, Viper TP top. They cannot cancel TPs. Relocate is gonna go back. And it's Wisp alone. He's going to tether back to the Undying. They did kill the Wisp, but they will lose every other hero. That's a 1 for 2 trade so far. He's tipping out, right clicks. Nope, not enough damage. This is the sad part. They they don't have a stun, so they can't cancel. They can't cancel TPs. 
and they are not fighting that much because of that probably um, like whenever Cloud9 tries to fight someone that hero tip is out and that's it you can't do anything so they are just focusing on the map control farming a lot out farming the enemy team really hard there is a 10k gold advantage for Cloud9 right now so they are focusing on out farming really hard and uh, I really hope we don't get to see the, the same thing like that Razer game where Envy was extremely farmed on Razer six loaded but only tanky items he had no damage and no one could deal damage in the late game so they lost in the late game SF is a good right clicker though SF is a good carry so late game is okay here in this one did I just see a tusk there? what is tusk? Um. Couldn't make it this time. This time the damage was enough. They will wait for another Roche. Roche will be back very soon. And with the next Roche, they have to take at least one set of racks. They are not even chasing the Razor. Like, they don't really care right now. They don't have a stun to cancel the TP. Razor is going to TP out anyway. So they just don't care about IG. They wanna farm up the Shadow Fiend. By the way, look at his net worth. He has almost two times more net worth than the second hero, which is Razor. <laughs> So let's see how is this going to be um, with the objectives. Has to the they should be able to take at least one set of racks to get some objectives. Even Ewels would be Radiant's helpful, yeah. They could top. make a Ewels on someone to cancel TP's, but maybe this is their plan to not even care about people tipping out and they don't care about killing like what they want is objectives and they are getting what they want right now like Fata is extremely tanky right now and nothing can stop him he's manning the fuck up right now they are stealing his damage though this is something they have to be careful about if he loses his damage it's not good for them uh, the tombstone is not used yet I believe Maybe they were waiting for this, for Razor to steal damage, and now when he gets his damage back, they will go with the tombstone and everything. Look at how tanky he is. Butterfly and Solar Crest. That's a total of 65% evasion. And they are diving on the tier 4 towers, they just, they just going in. You don't need to cancel TP's, you just go on them and kill them all. They are getting these rocks here, mechanism is still up by the way. Mech is not used yet. My game is lagging a little bit. I am having some FPS drops. Grave is on cooldown or not, it just came off cooldown. Focusing the tier 3 tower. tower Don't give a shit about Viper. Look at his position. He knows there is a Wisp that can heal him. He knows there is a Undying and a Pugna. There are three heroes that can heal Shadow Fiend. So... He just has an extremely aggressive position and he right clicks the barracks. And now they can go for the mega creeps, like Aegis is still up. Everything is up 
They or maybe they just go in throne. <laughs> no need mega creeps. I think IG will be forced to fight here um, if they don't want to lose the throne. Very nice four stuff to cancel the link that's stealing the damage. And uh, he's just right clicking the towers now. And they are healing him. Undying has a heal, Pugna has a heal, Wisp has a heal. They call the GG. That's it. <laughs> uh, they don't. <laughs> they don't even care about fighting you. They just get your barracks. This is such a strange game, such a weird game, but it worked out perfectly. So, damn, damn. So basically that's it, what a game, Solar Crest and Butterfly, that's a total of 65% evasion, Skadi, Sanjin Yasha, very tanky with the mechanism, I don't think he even used the mech in the, in the last fight, who knows, maybe he did, he probably did, never mind. Octarine core agonims on Envy. Next item would be a Hex, I believe, or maybe a Evil Scepter. So, Evil Scepter would have been nice on Queen of Pain, for example, um, to cancel some TPs when people are trying to TP out. But this is the thing. They didn't care about people TPing out. They didn't care that much about fighting. They got these kills, these 16 kills, because they are simply stronger than the enemy. What they wanted is farmed SF that with an Aegis and three big items 30 minutes into the game stay in front and just right click the tower and have three heroes to heal him up and uh, just make sure he never dies.